the government has not ruled out another lockdown before Christmas following the rapid spread of the new COVID variant, Omicron. Scientists are urging more restrictions to deal with the threat. Otherwise, they say we could be seeing 3,000 hospital emissions a day by January, putting immense strain on the NHS. The Deputy Prime Minister, Dominic Raab, joins us now live from Westminster. Good morning to you. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. So morning, what Charlotte. is going to happen with restrictions? Are we going to see further measures imposed before Christmas? Well, we're monitoring it hour by hour, day by day. We think we've got the right plan at the, at the moment, but it's constantly updated in relation to the data. What we know um, is that the Omicron variant is doubling uh, in the community in terms of cases uh, every two or three days. Um, what's less clear, um, although we've now got um, 104 people in hospital as a result of Omicron, is what the severity is in terms of the number of deaths, and that's because of the time lag, which is why whatever the modelling, whatever the assumptions, uh, and a lot of this is contested between scientists themselves, let alone uh, the decisions politicians have to make, but we need to see that raw data. The one thing we do know is that the vaccine booster programme is working. We've got over 50% of adults boosted. We know that increases protection by over 70%. We're ramping up the capacity to drive that forward precisely to avoid having to uh, take further decisions which would only be considered based on the data and were absolutely necessary. OK, well, I mean, you're monitoring things, you're going to have a plan in place, but when are you going to tell people? Because we had this situation last year, didn't we? And then the rug was pulled out from beneath people right at the last minute. They had to change all sorts of Christmas plans. Is that going to happen again this year or will those restrictions change after Christmas if they are going to be changed? Well, look, I, I appreciate it. and there's different views on this. We heard what the scientists said. You had your own poll. And, and, and so what we're doing is we're monitoring it uh, hour by hour, day by day. We need to see how severe Omicron is and then we'll be able to take informed decisions. And of course, we want to take them earlier rather than later. In terms of the things that we've done early, we've accelerated um, the vaccine booster take up by extending the hours of the vaccine centres, halving the time people need between their second and third booster. Um, for example, with Pfizer and Moderna, you don't have to sit there for 15 minutes after you've had the jab. Um, and that allows more throughput. So we're doing all the things that we can reliably do now to boost our resilience and to avoid having to take uh, is, uh, more difficult great. decisions. Are you worried, though, that if you do have to announce further restrictions, that people aren't going to be listening? Because yet again, if we look at the front page of The Guardian today, there's a picture of a social gathering, a party at the Downing Street Garden. There are up to 17 people there, no social distancing. And this flies in the face of the restrictions at the time. So for a lot of people at home, they'll be sitting there going, hold on a second, this was May the 15th when we were sat at home, we were obeying the rules, we weren't meeting people, and yet look what the people who are making the rules were doing. They were all having cheese and wine in the garden and chatting with their mates. Forgive me, Charlotte, I don't agree with that characterisation. You're right to point to the rules on social mixing, but the Number 10 garden is a place where meetings were had and, indeed, uh, uh, um, uh, business uh, was conducted. Uh, occasionally, they would have a drink afterwards, and, and that's what you saw there. So afterwards. That's not so, the same as the so rules on social work, mixing. Then. You're saying they were having cheese and wine after the work meeting, so presumably it was a, a social event after a work meeting. No, I, th well, I think uh, in relation to that photo, there'd been a number 10 press conference, there'd been meetings throughout the day, and uh, during the course of that, uh, uh, drinks would be, uh, drinks may be had, and that was, of course, uh, consistent with the regulations and is different from the rules on social mixing. It's important to remember that Number 10 is uh, both the home to the Prime Minister and his family, but also is, is where his office is. And uh, the garden backs on to um, uh, the, 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 the workplace uh, offices. Uh, you, you're right, there was a press conference on that day, Dominic Raab, uh, and let's just remember what was said at that press conference by Matt Hancock, the Health Secretary at the time. You can meet one other person from outside your household in an outdoor public place, but please keep two metres apart. This weekend, with the good weather and the new rules, I hope people can enjoy being outside. But please, stick with the rules, keep an eye on your family and don't take risks. I mean, the fact is, Dominic Raab, the people there in Downing Street, everyone can see it's on the front page of the papers, they didn't stick to the rules. They didn't listen to their own health secretary. That is not a working party. There is no laptop in sight. If it's drinks after a work date, that's a party. Well, you know, that was not in the rules.
no, sorry, it's a, a, a place of work. Uh, there'd been meetings throughout the day, including that Can, can, uh, on, can you just conference. clarify? It, what's happening? What are we watching there? Is it, is it a work meeting? So you're saying two different things. It's a place of... If it's a place of work, so was that... Is that what we're watching there, a work meeting with cheese and wine, no laptops, and, and sort of what must be five different meetings? Two people are sat on the grass having a meeting, uh, and then Carrie's baby is there. So you're saying it's a work meeting? There were work meetings held throughout the day, and as often... Uh, the case in other walks of life, uh, they might have a drink um, uh, towards the end oh, of it, and oh, uh, because sorry, can I finish the and, and because it is also the home uh, of the prime minister, I, I, the, the, then you you can also see um, his wife coming down uh, and checking in on him uh, during so, that. Sorry, time. sorry, are you are you saying at that time what Matt Hancock failed to tell us at the press conference was that actually if you are working and you've got an outdoor space or if you're working from home you've got a garden you can invite other people around who don't live there who you might work with and you can have cheese and wine so. Could, could, could doctors and nurses sit outside and have cheese and wine? I mean, I'm, I'm sure they didn't have the time to do it. They had more serious work to do. Could all the delivery drivers gather in one person's garden and sit there and have cheese and wine? Was that allowed in May 2020, Dominic Raab? So the, the, you're conflating the rules on what applied in a workplace and what was the rules for social mixing. And as I said, and no, it doesn't apply in the same way uh, uh, right, in other Downing settings. Street staff. Sorry, can I finish the... And it doesn't... Of course, um, doctors and nurses in a clinical setting would not be able to uh, do this, but then again, um, that is a very different set of considerations on health grounds and, and all but the rest what, of it. So why, why, why is there a special rule for people at Downing Street, then? Why, why couldn't anybody else do that? Well, it's the same rule, but that was a place where work meetings were held. And, and indeed... So give me an uh, example. Give me an example of another group of people not at Downing Street, who could have done that? Give me an example of another group of people in the entire country on May 2020 who could have finished work and sat there and had cheese and wine. Give me one example of another group of people. Well, in, in any setting where they were conducting their work... Give me an example. Um, what, which, which industry? Sorry, I, which I, group I, of people? I, sorry, you're doing the usual thing of trying to sort yeah, of rant you're, and you're, you're doing me. the usual I... thing, of Mr Robin, not answering the question, and everyone can see that. They're watching at home. I'd like to know. You're I saying it was a walk of life. It was a thing that happened in the walk of life. The... Who sorry, else could have done that? Another group of people? That's all I'm asking. Which no, other group of people could have done the, that? The, the... The, the time you take to answer the questions and interrupt me always takes longer than you give for me to answer the questions. The point I'm making is there are different rules for work settings uh, than from social settings, and the rules were followed, and there were a series of meetings, and indeed... The rules um, weren't followed, I, I know though, from, were they? Uh, they were, Sorry, they, because the rules for workplaces say that you should only have face-to-face -face meetings if absolutely necessary. Only absolutely necessary participants should attend meetings, and they should maintain two-metre separation throughout. And we can see from that photo that's not the case. Well, they were necessary meetings. You're talking about the uh, cockpit of the emergency crisis response. They had work meetings throughout the day and, uh, and uh, on occasion uh, had a drink uh, during that period or uh, once the main meetings were over. But the, but the fundamental conflation that you're trying and to and make... You're going to keep me interrupting settings. you again, but you can't give me an example. You just said it was happening in walks of life. You can't give me an example of another group of work people, industry people, anybody else that could have done that. It seems to me, and everyone else will be watching this at home thinking he's applying just one rule to people at Downing Street. You cannot give us an example of any other work situation where that applied. I'm sorry, I've, I've woken up to the Guardian uh, front page. Uh, I've checked very carefully what the, um, uh, the answer uh, was to the question that you've asked, but I, but I haven't gone and trawled uh, to, to find you an example. And what I can tell you is that this is a work setting, um, and it can be done in a garden, indeed, because of the extra ventilation. Um, the, there are good reasons for that. Uh, and, and, and that is the... You know, you're talking about a place which was at the centre of the emergency response uh, to this pandemic, and uh, they which, which were working... Which makes it even more worry, Mr Raab, they're the centre of the response and they're all drinking cheese and wine. You know, I would have thought if I was running the, the, the centre of response, you'd send people home, have an early night, guys, let's not do anything too silly, we're back at work tomorrow, we're running the country, 350 people have died this morning, there's going to be another 300 people that are going to die tomorrow. So yeah. let's not have cheese and wine, we, we are at the centre of critical response. We're looking for responsibility. That's irresponsible, Sorry. isn't it? Sorry, you're, 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 that's a classic ivory tower description of the way emergency response works because they're working all the hours God sends, working incredibly hard, gruelling conditions. And what you've seen is, uh, in the context of a working day, um, uh, people having uh, a, a drink 
um, uh, in a work setting. You and can understand, though, sorry to interrupt, but we're really short of time, why it's upsetting for people watching at home who stuck to the rules, who weren't doing things like this. It's not just this one, is it? You know, with November the 13th, November the 25th, the 27th, December the 10th, December the 14th, you know, the list goes on of the number of gatherings. And I know from your point of view, we'll say, oh, well, there's a, there's a justification, there's a loophole for every one of these. But for everybody watching at home who abided by the rules, the perception is that you were telling people what to do, and yet in government, you weren't following the rules yourself. Well, no, I don't agree with that. Um, in, there's a fundamental distinction between what was uh, uh, allowed in workplace settings where people had to be at work from the social distancing and, of course, in relation to the wider um, claims that have been made. Sue Gray, uh, senior civil servant, formerly the head of ethics and propriety in the Cabinet Office, is looking at all of those. And it's right she does that because I do accept uh, that the perception matters and, therefore, any of those claims need to be looked at thoroughly. OK, well, that's... No, well, fair enough. We'll wait to see the outcome of that investigation in that case. Dominic Rob. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Talk to you.